What if you had a choice? A choice of joining a line or a choice of making your purchases online? What would you choose? While you ponder on that, the National Lotteries Authority has provided another purchasing option. All their games are now available online. Yes, Grenadians! From wherever you are, purchase your favorite daily and jackpot type games using any electronic device. Register on the NLA's website at www.nla.gd. Top up your account and enjoy online lottery gaming at your convenience. We're taking shopping comfort up, 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 several notches, but the choice is yours. Join a line or buy online. NLA, make your dreams come true. So, privilege of sampling the Golden Jubilee edition of the limited edition spice rum from the Grenada Distillers. And I must say, it's something that you should try. Um, it is authentically Grenadian, but from the flavors to the aromas to the overall taste, the blend is great. It's light, it's golden like the Golden Jubilee and I think you can make any collector's shells anywhere in the world. Hats off to the Green Air Distillers. Yeah! Whoa! Give me a good welcome back, guys. Come on! Come on! What are uh, the amount I cuss out? The amount I cuss out I get yesterday. I was watching the program with you, you know, Lydia. You know, easy, you know. Eh? Lord of his mercy. Yeah, watching all you, watching all you. I'm watching you, I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Yes, Alisa, how you doing? Anybody in defend me yesterday? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Whoa! Interesting day. What an interesting day, guys. <sighs> I am live, by the way. For those, for those of you who want to speculate. Is he really live? Yeah, I'm, I'm live right now. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm live. Gosh. Corinne, how you doing? Welcome back, guys. Welcome, 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 one and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Vern! <laughs> Kathy Banks! Welcome, welcome, welcome one and all, guys. This is Ride Along Live, and it is Tuesday. And on Tuesday, it's what's pissing me up. Let me tell you what happened yesterday. So yesterday, we had a little bit of an issue, right? Because I came back in studios, and you guys know I spent, uh, uh, you know, about a month or so in Grenada. So I came back in studios and I had some, some kind of cleaning up to do, right? Some fixing up and thing. So as much as I wanted to come live last yesterday, I was unable to. So we had to do a rebroadcast. So we did a rebroadcast yesterday. And a few of you guys realized and recognized that it was a rebroadcast. And all your take out the skin dread. All your let me have it. Now let me first, let me say this, guys. Let me say this. Let me say this. We still haven't gotten to the point where we are very accepting, accepting to and 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 just you know let people live in their life. Because I was watching the comments yesterday, the story that was aired yesterday is from a story from, from a while back, but it was about a transgender, a, a trans, a trans woman. So a man that was, you know, born a man, and then he transitioned into a woman. So that was the conversation. And Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. You guys was watching it? <laughs> Curran McQueen, yes. And all they was cussing me, all they tell me I'm sinning. All they tell me I would never see the face of God. The amount of things all you tell me yesterday under this live. I swear all you is judge. All you is, all you is, all you is the executioner. Everything, all you is everything in one. 
<laughs> How much are you doing? Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> Lydia it was the ringmaster. Anyway, guys. Thank you guys so much. I want to say how much I love and appreciate you, the Ride Along fans, supporters, viewers around the world. And how much I miss you guys. Fun lover, big up yourself. How much I miss you guys um, and not being in this particular air chair. Um, it's my favorite place. It's my favorite thing to do uh, at, the, at the end of the day. And a lot of people look at this program and they, they think it's easy. Guys, it's not easy. It's difficult. And you may watch a one-hour program and say, just a one-hour program. It, it actually took us a whole entire day Sometimes two days to put together one of our program. All right? Joy Bronx and Vince in the house. Big up yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Nutmeg Queen. Nutmeg Queen, nice to see you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is a story, guys. This is a story. Now, you guys are paying attention to what's happening. There are three stories that I want to touch on. Three stories in particular. The first story I want to touch on um, that's pissing off a lot of people that have really been, you know, congesting the whole bloggers for everybody talking about it. So everybody have an opinion on this. Everybody have an opinion on this. It has to do with Bishop Clyde Harvey and Father uh, Gerard, Gerard Paul. Now, in case you don't remember, Father Gerard Paul is, some might say, a controversial priest. Some might say uh, a radical priest, right? Uh, I, he, he's a cool guy to conversate with, by the way. Uh, he'd been on the program August 23rd of last year. And that was right after Spice Mass. And if you remember clearly, that same father, Gerard Paul, played Jab Jab, right? And it was a lot of controversy. People from all over were saying how you could be a pastor, how you could be a priest, how you could be a priest and you're playing jab. I just send back this email. Yeah. How you could be a priest and playing jab? Radical priest, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so he got a lot of condemnation, guys. A lot of condemnation. I want to take you guys a little bit back to that interview that we had with, 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 the, um, with the priest, right? That was October. See, I, I, I still looked at... I was aging back then, too. So it, it wasn't long. It was just the other day. Take a look, guys. This is, this is a quick excerpt from the interview that we had with, 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 with the priest. So, and they were both churchmen. So they were on opposite planes of the of the of the argument. Right. So when we say the church, we we sound as if all the church is one, um, one united, uh, uh, with one view about everything. That's not a church. Church is a is a picture uh, of of views and, and points of views and. and and, uh, and, and, and and thinking, so it's it's not it's not one. So I mean, not because I am a Catholic priest, it means that I will um, subject myself to the thinking of every other Catholic priest. Mm. And if if there are people who, who centuries afterwards still condone what the Church did. Uh, Many uh, members of the church were involved in slavery, and in fact, I mean, generally, as part of the colonial project. Mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if 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 some people condone them that and see that's fine, that's up to them. But for me, it's not fine. So I, I don't have a problem. I see no contradiction being a a a, 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 um, a Catholic priest. And that's not what is wrong. Yeah, I tell you what, I, you sung you sung like a historian, which is great because I got a chance to visit Ghana. I got a chance to go through the castle, and I was I, with with that tour. I I I have such such a broader sense of understanding as what happened in the in that in that uh, that slave triangle. 
right? And you sound like someone who should be educating people about the history of, of what happened in slavery. Yeah, and it's good. I think I, I've been, I haven't heard a priest spoke so profoundly, uh, you know, some even against the own, their own house in which they, 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 they're, they're a part of. What would you say to other priests that may differ from or, or might have varying views than you on this? What would you, what would you say to them? Again, as I said, people can hold uh, uh, varying views on on um, on issues, but facts are stubborn things. They don't go away. We could try to wish facts away. We can't wish them away. Right. Uh, and um, the thing is that um, whenever we do wrong, we must admit it, and we must move on. You know, do I mash your toe and you're in pain? And you're in pain and in pain and I am standing on your feet? Mm -hmm. And I want to be wrong. And All right. So that was that was the, the priest back then in um, August 23rd of last year speaking in condemnation, condemnation of the Catholic Church. And I, then I asked the priest, I said, but, but how could you be a part of the Catholic Church and the way how you're speaking. Like he said that the church was, was, was involved um, and a part of the slave trade. And, and I mean, you would think, eh? you would think that he have this profound knowledge and understanding of the atrocities of slavery and, 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 and the role that the Catholic Church played at this point in time. And to be a part of it, you would think that he probably might not be in the position. Anyway, anyway. So besides the church, the, the, the priest playing jab, besides the, the priest speaking out so profoundly against his own church, well, it got a little bit interesting this week, guys. The bishop, right, the bishop of the, that governs that church, Clyde Martin Harvey, who is a Trinidadian clergyman and bishop for the Roman Catholic Diocese of St. George in Grenada. Um, he was ordained back in 1976, so he had a, a, quite a long reign on there. He just suspended that particular priest. Now, <laughs> I tell you, it gets crazy, right? Because... Everything is out in the open, guys. This is like this is like all out in the open. Now we only could speak about this like like what we're doing now because it has been played out on social media, right? So this clip I want to play next is credit to WPG10. I know you guys want to call, but hold the calls for a quick second. Let me explain. This clip that I'm about to play is compliment WPG10. This same priest, Gerard Paul, has been suspended from the altar. Yeah, check this out. Father Paul had been warned about his behavior, right? And uh, he persisted in it, right? So therefore, I am left with a sense that this is not going to be corrected. But today is a sad day in the life of Brother Sally, Holy Family Church. And please remember, it's going to have repercussions. We are a people, we, cons we are the congregation, we matter. People do matter. That's all I'm saying. I am very respectful to you and to the church. I really do hope that there will be some consultation with regards to our community and what we feel and have an input into some aspect of what goes on in our community. We do matter. Christ was a radical. Please remember that. Thank you. Well, it depends on how you define radical, okay? It's real bold. It's real hard to take that. It's real well, hard to take that. All I can say to that sister is yes, that if you have heard how Father Paul has spoken in the last days about the church in the very common, about me personally, you would realize that we had no choice. 
Some people thought I shouldn't come, but I'm very glad I came. Why? Because the people feel strongly about the issues. What is communicated to them is difficult because they have latched on to Gaza as truth. I think the situation speaks for itself. Um, the bishop has said what he has said. He has said that I am suspended from all priestly duties as of now immediately. And the people have reacted. Um, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. I heard the call, the consultation that they're asking for could not be done because it, it, the whole thing came into the public domain beyond um, River Sally. So I had no choice but to deal with it as a diocesan issue. Now we have to repair the hurt that people feel. That will not be easy. A lot depends on Father Paul himself. And I will do my best because I hear their pain. And as the Bishop of the Diocese, as a shepherd, I can't ignore the pain. All right. Okay. So let us talk. Let us talk, guys. This is the phone number, 718-701-5720. Now, this particular priest, as I said, right, uh, Father G Gerard Paul, um, had a, a history of speaking his mind. In fact, I think, personally, I think he's a realist. Because when we had this conversation and he went on and started to speak about slavery and the role the Catholic Church played, I was like, hmm, this guy... This, you don't hear much preach, not, not much priest speaking like that. He spoke with conviction, right? So this whole thing now is played out, playing out in on social media, where he is being suspended, or he is suspended. But that is not all, right? Again, I gotta credit WPG10 on some of these clips because we're gonna run some of your clips, WPG10. I appreciate it. Another twist to it. So after um, Bishop Clyde went into the, the church and made that statement, and by, by the way, that statement of his suspension had to be read out through every Catholic church, right? So he had to even go into the church where um, uh, pre, uh, Father Gerard was preaching and read that statement out in front of him. There is a twist. Now, Father Gerard Paul is adamant about staying as priests and coming back this Sunday and preaching to the congregation. Check this out. Big tonight. And now, this special extended report. Radical Grenadian Catholic priest, Father Gerard Paul, remains defiant and his congregants in full support, even after being suspended indefinitely from priestly duties by Bishop of St. George's Clyde Harvey. So, words are powerful, but boy, words can be very meaningless. So he talks about suspension and look the reaction. The announcement about Father Paul's suspension was read out in all Catholic churches in Grenada Sunday and by Bishop Harvey himself at the Holy Family R.C. Church in River Sally in Rural St. Patrick. Father Jared Paul has been suspended from all priestly ministries. Bishop Harvey showed up at the service being conducted by Father Paul, sitting in the pew and at one point rejecting an invitation by the priest to join him in the sanctuary. The two, however, shook hands during a traditional part of the service where people exchanged greetings. At the end of the service, Bishop Harvey took to the altar to read out Father Paul's letter of suspension that met with jeers and tears by the parishioners. What is wrong is that you're speaking the truth. In the Catholic faith, do we have freedom of speech or not? Do we respond again because it's obvious that I'm not getting through on some, in some ways. Father Paul had been warned about his behavior, right? And uh, he persisted in it, right? So therefore, I am left with a sense that this is not going to be corrected. But today is a sad day in the life of Brother Sally, Holy Family Church. And please remember, it's going to have repercussions. 
Father Paul received the ire of the bishop in an instant rebuke at a Holy Week Mass a week and a half ago when he said the church was being complicit in the carnage in Gaza by remaining silent. The priest then did a series of media interviews on the matter subsequently and attended a march in support of Palestine on Friday, during which he called his bishop a hypocrite on the issue. When we say the church and you hear with Jerry Deese and Jerry Deese and he condemn and he fighting, that's just the hierarchy and a fellow called Clyde Harvey who is the bishop to the leader. These are the people, these hypocrites that make these noises and they pretend they are the church in Grenada. The grassroots people are firmly behind the Palestinian cause. Bishop Harvey told the River Sally Church that his priest was being suspended not because of the comments, but because of what he called a pattern of behavior. The congregation, almost in unison, was not accepting it. It's very hard to take that. The bishop made it clear that the priest was not being defrocked, just suspended, and still hoping the occasion would arise when he could be reinstated. But, he suggested, some of that will be completely dependent on the priest's behavior going forward. A defiant Father Paul, in an exclusive interview with Carib Update News, hinted that he will continue to defy the church's leadership. I will be here next Sunday. I will be here. Where, where, where else will I be? I have been for 30 years, every Sunday with a few exceptions, in church. And long before that, since I was a child, I will be in church. But doing whatever I have to do. <laughs> so what if another priest comes here next Sunday? Well, like this one who came Sunday, he sit in the pew, he stay outside, he drive, he can't he go home, or he come and sit in the, in the sanctuary with me. That's all. Bishop Harvey said, until a permanent parish priest is decided on, there will be an arrangement to have the church service. The, the dean, the priest who's in overall charge, will be responsible for making sure that there are services here, and I will have a hand in that. But that might be easier said than done as the people there seem to suggest that they will not be willing to either cooperate or attend Mass with an alternate priest. You understand? So it's not like after today that's the end of it. After today, this church is here and the people will continue to come to church. I will continue to come to church and we'll do what we have to do. Bishop Harvey scolded by the congregation for no prior consultation before announcing the suspension acknowledges that given what has transpired, it will be a difficult road to keep the River Sally flock together. Now we have to repair the hurt that people feel. That will not be easy. A lot depends on Father Paul himself. And I will do my best because I hear their pain. And as the Bishop of the Diocese, as a shepherd, I can't ignore the pain. He said the people may have been misled on the church's position on the conflict in Gaza. The firestorm having started nearly two weeks ago when Father Paul chastised the church for, in his view, being silent on the carnage in Gaza. The fact that the church is deeply involved in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Sudan. I mean, at one point the Pope invited the Sudanese leaders to come to the Vatican to talk peace. So the church is deeply involved. But a lot of the congregation here seem to think, and I can guess the source, that the church is doing nothing. You know, the church is not standing up for justice, and that's sad. Ah, boy. Ah, boy. All right, let me let me put on let me put the, the number up, guys, because I want some of my Catholic followers. So give me a call. Let us talk about this. Because this, this is deeply embarrassing. Not only from folks from the religion, but just for the church community in general. This is deeply, I mean, this, this whole thing, I believe, should have or could have been done and not played out so much in the news media, on social media. This tit for tat back and forth. And we're talking about the bishop and the father. So how does that look in the grand scheme of things, guys? You as a parishioner, you as a follower of the, of, the, of the Catholic faith, how do you feel about all of this stuff playing out itself on social media, causing deep divide and embarrassment to the Catholic Church? Give me a call, 718 Let us talk about this because it gets even worse. Here's some questions. 
Here are some questions, guys. Now, Father Gerald, who, by the way, I spoke to him yes, uh, day before yesterday, and he did promise to come and chat with us on the program, um, but we was unable to get him yesterday. Who knows? He might just call in and give us a full explanation on the phone. I'm, I'm still hopeful that he will do that. I did, in fact, also reach out to um, Bishop Harvey, who I spoke to someone, one of his representatives, and he said that he's not ready to speak at the moment. Hopefully, they get a chance to come and speak and kind of probably calm people down a little bit because this is deeply dividing the church, right? So for my the folks in the Catholic faith, what do you feel, how do you feel about this playing out itself on social media, so boldly on social media? What are your thoughts? And the folks who are not of Catholic faith, the folks who are just following, what are your thoughts on it? 718-701-5720. But there's one more caveat to this whole thing, guys. Yesterday, um, Bishop Clyde Harvey posted a video and said this. Brothers and sisters, there have been numerous comments on the statement made by myself at River Sally on the social media platforms. Many comments seem to have misinterpreted what I have said. I wish to state the following. Father Jared Paul has not been suspended because of what he has said about Gaza. His sentiments have been echoed by many in and out of the Catholic Church. The Church is very concerned and will continue to speak out about the unjust situations in the world, including Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, and Sudan, while being active in caring for persons in the midst of these situations. Father Jared Paul has been suspended because of his continuing lack of respect for the church of which he is a priest and his pronouncements that often stray from the truth. When challenged about that, he does not correct his errors nor seem to care about such corrections. Many of the responses in the media focus on Gaza and have not been able to note the other issues involved. Over the past 10 days, Father Paul has expressed his views in ways that seem to mock authority. Respect for authority is one of the pillars of civilized society. When such respect is undermined without being addressed, the end result could only be a total breakdown of society. This applies to all sectors. The suspension of a priest from ministry is not to be confused with dismissal from the priesthood. Suspension, however long it may be, is always with a view to fraternal correction. It is our hope that Father Paul will listen to that call. Our diocese considers him a brother priest and we are willing to assist him in seeking the necessary help that he needs. We continue to pray that the risen Lord will guide us in the days ahead. Alleluia, alleluia. I told you guys, a lot, a lot of moving parts to this story. A whole heap of moving parts to the story, guys. Let's get your view on it right now. Guys, again, 718-701-5720, that's my number. This is a story, it's far from finish, all right? Now, as I said, Father Gerald Paul, who was a guest on the program a year ago, after <laughs> it was widely shown ar across the world that he was, you know, he is, is a radical priest. I mean, he's a, he's a dunk to art. My experience with the fella, talking to him, he's a dunk to art fella, right? He came on and we was talking about the story that came out after he was playing jab jab. And most people, especially in the in, in, in most religious people, oftentimes when they talk about jab and carnival, they they don't they don't advocate for that. They don't push that. Especially when they talk about jab, jab, jab in particular. This particular priest is so radical, he was in the front of the jab jab band. Right? 
Then he came on, you know, he wearing little earring and thing. Hey, he's a radical guy. Then he came on and we had this lengthy conversation about the role that the um, that the the, the 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 Catholic Church played during slavery. And you could have swear that this priest is not interested in setting one foot inside of a Catholic church. Nevertheless, he spoke his mind profoundly. Now, is he wrong for speaking the truth about the evidential facts, the factual nature? And it is written that one, the Catholic church or the church of well, the Catholic Church did, in fact, benefit from slavery. It has been written, and that he spoke on that. Is he wrong to speak about the atrocities and the selective, you know, the selection of, of when the church speak on atrocities? Like, for instance, what's happening in Gaza. He spoke out profoundly on that. Is he wrong? to come out and speak about this thing, notwithstanding the fact that he himself is a part of the same church that he's preaching, that, 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 that he preached to every day, congregation that he preached to every day. Call me up right now, guys. This is a big story. This has been going on, and it will continue to go on. Let me know what your thoughts on this, guys. This is, again... A conversation that you all are having, everyone is having. What is going on? I want to hear from the folks. I want to hear from the folks, guys, that are Catholic. I want to hear from the folks that are Catholic and that are, that even folks in the River Sally uh, Church, right? Uh, if, if we could get someone from there, give us a call. Or anyone for that matter. In fact, if you even not Catholic, give us a call. Let me know what your thoughts on this. Let me know how you feel about this story. And, and, and do you think that, that this should be playing out itself like this on social media as it is right now? The back and forth between the priests and the, the, the bishop. And could it have been, could, could it have been done um, more privately? Huh? And we are not seeing the end of it because what will happen Sunday? What is going to happen on Sunday when... The priest go back to, 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 to go back to the altar and then he's suspended. What will happen? Let's jump to the phone lines. Call live. where are you calling us from? Hey, Junior, I'm calling from Ken. Junior, uh -huh. I want you to link me up with Pastor um, um, Father Paul because I want me to Paul to jump for Juve for the carnival. <laughs> hey, do, uh, you know what? That. You must stop that. <laughs> <laughs> you must stop. You must stop that. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I was just pulling comfort you with no, you know what? Who doesn't like the truth? Uh -huh. And to me, I, I think because he says some things, right. the bishop is and I find have the bishop has something more personal for Paul that the con like the congregation know. Right. And he's saying that the people hurt. I look at River Sally people and my mom goes to River Sally Catholic Church and she always talk about Pastor for, for, um, about Father Paul and it's like River Sally people like Father Paul. So I think the bishop has some kind of personal agenda with, with Father Paul, so he just chose the right time. Uh -huh. And if he had us to um, suspend Father Paul, I think he'd take it more privately. People don't like the truth. People don't like people are bold. They don't like people who come out and say certain stuff. They will, you know? And I look at Father um, Harvey, Bishop Harvey, and he look like he have a lot of skeleton in his closet, but he's not coming up. And I grew up in River Sally, uh -huh. my church. Uh -huh. We used to have to go to church, like, Junior, that is the most church I ever go when my grandmother was leaving and we go to church in River Sally Catholic Church. We have something for the whole entire week. Uh -huh. And it's surprised to me like how the church come like right now because it's like the it's like they're fighting in the church. The bishop come, they like, you know, as I said the last days, religion will go against religion, priests and things will go against each other, and that is what playing not right in River Sally, and it's so disappointed. Right. Because right. that's what that's my childhood church. That's my church. That's my church I know I grew up in. Yeah. And it's sad. And yeah. then my mom again is like, that's where she is again. And I look at it and the people is very hurt. And he's saying that he, he hear the pain of the people. I don't find I see the people in Vesali have pain against Pastor. I see they have pain now as the bishop come and do suspend him. 
Right. But it's sad, I don't know. It's so what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen on Sunday? The bishop is saying, I mean, the, the father is saying that he's going and preach and he expects to preach just as normal, as regular, but he's suspended. What if they have a new priest there? What, what are they going to compete for space at the altar? Well, then I guess we're going to see more on um, social media. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I Lord. guess so. I don't know. Oh, but then God. it's like, you, 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 I don't know. It's, it's sad. And I think, like, the bishop should, I don't know. Indeed. Leave past the M for Paul alone. The man is, is, is like, as you said, the realist. He have a little piercing in his ears. Do you have a little... Like, gonna, what I'm saying, Junior, I'm going to uh -huh. say something to you. Yeah. He's saying, like, but um, the Catholic Church have a lot of skeletons. Yeah. Riverside Catholic Church, I know they have harvest. They used to have party. They have all kind of sort of thing. All, all, all kind of thing. So why are you against Father Paul for being, being so real and saying about him suspending for what he said about Gaza? So why do you suspend him from because of the way he is? That is so hypocritic, um, hypocritical. Right, right. Caller, thank you so much. I'm getting a bunch of Don't... calls on, on the next line here. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much for calling, Caller. Appreciate you. Guys, give us a call. Phone lines are open. 718-701-5720. Taking your call live on the air. Let us know what you're think, what you thinking. What are your thoughts? Hi, hey, good night, Junior. Hey, Caller, good night. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Grenada, La Poetry, to like that. I have one question, though. La Poetry, hold on, hold on. La Poetry, I'm yeah. hearing a feedback. Where the feedback coming from? Well, I guess they're by the shop watching your line. Okay, okay. Hey, big up everyone in La Poetry, River Sally. That whole area there. La, 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 la Poetry, no, no, no. Not La Poetry, River Sally. La Poetry. Big up more, yeah. Well, La Poetry, yeah. You're yeah. on the right track. Yeah, 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 yeah. That whole area there. So, yeah, go ahead, caller. We're listening to you. What we want to know, the priest, uh, the bishop made the statement uh, when you played back the clip, we uh -huh. saw it that um, the people hold on to Gaza as the truth. So we want to know, is it a case that Father Paul is supporting Gaza and the bishop and the church is supporting Israel? Right. What 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 the suspension of the priests is not because is not because of the support or non-support of the Catholic Church to Gaza. He's saying that that is not the case. He's actually saying that that um, the, the 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 Pope invited and did in fact support Gaza. So he's saying that that information. And credit to the to the bishop. He's saying that that is not the case, right? What he's Junior, saying, yeah, between right. you and I, you uh -huh. think that's the truth? I don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't come across as if that's the truth. To me, I think it's something more okay. it linked to that. And it seems like it's busted out because the way he come across is like with tension. He come with rage when he come. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's something more. So I think it's personal. You think, because the, the we priest, at... you, think the, you think the bishop has something personal against the priest? The bishop or the is the bishop, personal. The bishop, the bishop, it's personal. Yes, and another thing again, the bishop criticized the priest for the place he chose to do what he did. But the bishop did the same thing. He come before the congregation and addressed it in a manner. And to me, it's even worse than how Father Paul did it. Mm, mm. I'm not a Catholic. It. We're not Catholic, right? Got you, Paul. And out of every church, you could hear everybody grumble. Somebody told me today in their church, they had a lot of grumbling and so forth. So, mm. how are we going to, how would that matter be resolved? Ah, uh, got you, caller. Got you, got you. Caller, we got to take a next call. Thank you so much for your input, it's all right? I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Guys, open up the phone. Caller, you live. Where are you calling us from? Good uh, night, Junior. I'm calling from Texas. Texas, how um, are you? How are I you doing? Say, looking at, yeah, I'm doing good. Just looking at, you know, the events unfolding, right? Right. Um, I'm sure in the past they, we have probably other priests been suspended, but we've never heard that. I, I just don't like how this has been handled as a Catholic in the public. And I've seen on other media where the bishop is just on the subject. I think this is just personal. Mm. Um, this priest is a very, very hardworking priest. Mm -hmm. um, he once was in St. David's where he repaired the church. And then I think the following week they removed him and put him somewhere else. I mean, this is not the first time this priest has been 
treated terrible, you know? So this bishop, I, I think, you know, I'm not happy with how he's handling the situation. Right. And uh, maybe he needs to be suspended as well. Mm, interesting stuff. His, so, his conduct is not appropriate at all. Right. Well, I, I, I think it's the formality of it is that if the priest, if the bishop has to suspend uh, a priest, it has to be read out, the suspension has to be read out in every church. Uh, and the bishop came into that church to read out the same that was done in all other Catholic but, churches. You know, why he had to go there, right? You know, it's just drama. You know, it's like you, 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 you're making the situation more, right? He even said in his interview, he was told not to go. And he said, I have to be here. Oh, so I I'm see. looking at body language. I'm looking at the bishop. And it, it's, it's coming across like he likes drama. That's how I see ah, it. I see. I so, see. You think the bishop liked drama? So I'm saying he was on his... He liked drama. He mm. liked it. Okay. okay. He liked it. And I'm telling you, it's okay. something to me personal. This is not... And then he coming back and saying, oh, um, he wants to set the record straight. Like, people are not look happy with how he has handled this situation. Mm. And um, it, to me, I'm very, 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 very upset. And I think a lot of other people have been upset with how this has been handled in the public. Yeah. Okay, Carla. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Texas. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, guys. Thank you. Phone lines are still open, 718-701-5720. What is going on? I want to hear from some of the folks from the Catholic faith, right? Um, yeah, the folks from the Catholic faith, give us a call, because I want to get your views on this. Back to the phone lines. Call Eli, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Canada, Junior. Canada, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. To be honest, Junior, I'm looking at this whole situation and it put a sour, sour, sour taste in my mouth because it's like even when I was ever thinking to become Catholic, this just threw it right out the window, right? And then the second thing, my second take on it is like, if you've, if we've ever looked at the past and things that have like organizations that went down or businesses that were shut down or cults that were taken down, it's always an insider that knows the policies, knows the procedure that opens up the door for the outsiders like us to see. And then we know like the truth about these said organizations. So maybe the priest is just opening the door for all of us to see what he has been seeing because he knows both sides. Right. right. So. But the bishop has to come again with the way that he's handling this. And you can kind of see he's buffing his chest when he's talking to the camera. So it's like, what are, you, what are we really doing? Like, are we making, what are we, what are we doing? Because I don't see the, the whole plot behind of this, to be honest, on the bishop's side. But, 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 but Colin, that's just me, my take. Let me ask you a question. If you are part of an institution, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just being mm -hmm. a devil's advocate here. You are part of an institution, a job mm -hmm. or, or, or a group, right? and you do not mm -hmm. adhere to the principles or the bylaws of that group or that institution, would you mm -hmm. stay in that institution knowing far well that your morals just doesn't mesh with that, doesn't align. that, align with I, that organization? I, I, no, I would not. However, if that is the only way that he gets a platform to then sh shed light on the lies that the organization is teaching or feeding the public, then I think it's better that he stays as an insider and gives the information, if you kind of get it that way, right? I, I understand. I see this in many different ways. I see it from our perspective, right? And I'm throwing this out as devil advocate to get people thinking a bit. It's just like, it's just like a political organization, because in, in many, many ways, the church is like, you know, a hush-hush kind of thing. Just like NYPD, political organization. I mean, listen, there, there are policies and procedures that if anyone go out and speak out against this, it's like you have an a, a unsigned non-disclosure agreement that you should not, right? And, 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 and is it okay then that if he was a part of a political organization and then the leader of the political organization is doing something that a, a lower minister then should come out and, and attack the political leader instead of fixing the problem within 
But Junior, we are on the outside, so we don't know what attempts that the priest made to try to fix on the inside. So as to why it now becomes a big public thing for them to get him out. You never know what he attempted behind closed doors because we are only now learning of this because of the way the bishop handled it. So we do not know what type of meetings happened prior, what letters happened prior. Maybe, and then he was the bishop was saying that. Um, the reason he was suspended was because of wrong teachings and not him not wanting to basically take ownership of those things or correct it. But I need to know, we need to know what, what was taught incorrectly? What has he been spreading incorrectly besides the Gaza thing that you're saying that everyone's holding on to, but is not the problem. What else is the problem? Tell us the real problem because we're not getting it. Right. Point taken, Gola. Thank you so much, Canada. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your input. 718-701-5720, guys. That is my number. Give me a call and let's talk about this, guys. What is going on? What is going on? While we wait for the call, I got to tell you guys that graduation is coming up. Graduation is coming up, guys. And if you are getting ready or your son, your daughter, your young one is in Form 5 in Grenada, we just, we just partner with... Um, Instaprint Grenada. Instaprint Grenada is offering printing services for final assembly. So if you want to get your t-shirt printed, you know the young ones, they like the nice little t-shirt, they like the nice little design on them kind of thing on them. We have so many different designs that they could choose from, create their own design and get their t-shirt printed for final assembly. Guys, if you want to get that printed, and remember Instaprint, you get your print done in, in 24 hours or less. Eh? So give um, Instaprint a call for more information on how you can get your final assembly t-shirt printed. The number that you call is 473-422-1011. That's right, a number down, 473-422-1011. Mention your seat on Ride Along Live for some nice little discount, all right? Okay. Back to the phone lines right now, Ride Along Live. Let us go. Caller, you live. Where are you calling us from? Hello. Yeah, hi, caller. How are you? Where are you calling us from? Hello. Hi. I'm fine, thank you. From North Carolina. North Carolina. How are you doing? I totally... I'm fine, thank you. I totally can't understand right. why the church or any church would be so thin-skinned. A priest should be able to voice his opinion, whether it's agreed upon by the church. Uh -huh. They are too secretive. If he has an opinion, he's entitled to it. The bishop made this a global issue, right. and everybody would voice the opinion. And he should not have said anything. He should have let it go and have gone under the road, rock like everything else goes under the rock. He right. has made it where Father Paul is going to come out to be the champion in all of this. They are too thin-skinned. Right. They are, should be able to withstand it. Whatever criticism the priest, a priest, would level upon them because any priest should level a, a, a situation up and, and, and should be accepted as that. Okay. It's, it's too much. And we should all let it go. He should be reinstated and let it go. Okay. Thank you so much, Bye-bye. Appreciate you so much. 718 getting your input on this topic, blazing topic that's pissing a lot of people off. Call your live. Where are you calling us from? Good evening, Junior. I'm calling from Grenada. Grenada, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Um, we, we, we watch the whole thing unfold, right? And uh, there are certain questions I think people are not asking. Uh -huh. Because, for example, did Father Paul know Bishop was going to be in River Sally? Because his letter stated he was suspended effective the 4th of April, I believe. Uh -huh. So was he, supposed, was he supposed to be doing Mass that morning? I don't know. That's an interesting you know, question. Exactly. But 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 but, but so even, even we, if we, was he made aware prior, the question should be: Was he made aware prior to him going to reverse? Well, that, that is another interesting question. We, we need to find out from Father Paul, probably, or the bishop. Right. You know, um, because apparently, if he's if he suspended the food, I'm just saying he would be known because I think that the policy is that the, the priest is first notified and then the rest of the, the congregation, I, I believe. Right. Right. So I, I believe we have some very interesting questions to ask and and, and, keep, and instead of, you know, yes, we love, I love Father Paul very much. 
But however, we, we need to get clarity right. on these questions. Right. Let me ask that, you a question. That, that's just my take. Let me ask you a question, Kola. What now, what now become of the congregation? These people who feel like they're loyal. We're watching them on screen right now and they're they're upset. They're hugging Pastor Paul, uh, um, Father Paul. They love him. Some of them are crying. They're vis visibly upset. What now becomes of the church if he's suspended and he's been replaced by another priest? What happened now? What, 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 what's the next step? Well, well Junior, let me look at this, right? Um, yes, Father Paul spoke about the issue um, in Gaza, and uh, he's totally correct. However, he went wrong when he said that the church was not responding. And in news clips, if we look, however, the, the secular media, they did not promote that because the, 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 the Pope would have made numerous statements. The day after the attack, Hamas attack, the Pope did make a, they, they, they did make a statement, right? Bishop Harvey, the week after Hamas attack, made statements on his program and has since been there making statements. He has made mass to them. Right. So I believe that when Father Paul was challenged on that, he found it difficult to accept. Right. And, and, and I think that is it, because if we listen to, to, to um, Bishop on, on WPG10, he stated that Father Paul, when challenged on certain things, he said, failed to correct them. Right. So, so, we have to, so we have to be fair and balanced when we're approaching this thing. You know, while, and, and I understand the congregation may love him, but the, whatever person is going there or whatever, we we'll need to help them understand, okay, where Father Paul went wrong, because it's clear, um, whenever we love something, we, we find it hard to accept when something has been done wrong. Right. So I, I believe that, that, that that is what is needed, right? right? But, but these are the questions that, that I have, because it, 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 it is very interesting. Why then did he, he, he must have known that Bishop, because he invited Bishop, yeah, the news said that Bishop refused the, the, the invitation. Right, he so refused, in my mind, to, he he refused to, the invitation to come up on uh, the sanctuary. On the altar. On the altar, sorry. All right, so if, that invitation. Yeah. So if, 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 he did, if he didn't know Bishop was coming, he would not have invited Bishop to, 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 um, to the altar, I guess. Well, I don't know if he invited him or it was protocol for him to come and make that announcement because as what we found out was that that announcement had to be made in every Catholic church on the island. Uh, exactly. So that was red. That was red. Exactly. And then the bishop decided to exactly. go to that particular church and read it to the congregation. So I don't know if it was well, that he you know, invited we, him or he just have, came. Well, we have to understand that when any bishop is in charge of their diocese and something like that, it will fall solely in the hands of the bishop to basically go to the go to the community. Right. Right? So that they will have a better understanding. Right? However, you know, um, we have to look at certain questions, and, and, and without these questions being answered, we, we cannot say definitely that, that it was handled wrong by any, any, any party. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Kola. We really appreciate you so much uh, on your input, guys. Also, let me just say this, that Ride Along did, in fact, reach out to uh, Father Gerald Paul. Um, uh, he did indicate that he will speak to us. He's probably just not ready to speak to us yet, but rest assured that um, we are in contact with him. Uh, also, we are in contact with Bishop Clyde Harvey, who we reached out to earlier, and uh, we was told uh, in the SN that he's not ready to um, talk on the matter yet. I'm thinking that he is he wants his statement that was published yesterday to stand at the moment, but we are in contact. We have his numbers, and we have an open forum, open line, if 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 um, Father Harvey, um, and, um, Bishop Harvey, or Father. Uh, Paul wants to come on, give us a call, we make it happen because we still think that there are so much more questions that need to be answered. Back to the phone lines, caller, where are you calling us from? Hello, I'm calling from Brooklyn. Good afternoon, good afternoon Brooklyn, to you. How are you doing? Just, 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 uh, yes, yes, just, uh, good, good, good. Just an inquiry. Um, we're talking about religion, and that is very um, dear to a lot of people's heart. But um, is the Catholic Church a religion? Or is it a state? Do you have any idea? And that's an interesting one. Uh, probably both. Yes, yeah, so probably, as, as far as I know, it's, probably, it's probably, one of the probably, smallest probably, states. Probably, probably both. Well, people need to wake up and realize what's happening in this world. And don't be fooled by people. So it's one of the smallest states in the world. 
Uh, and do people know that within that um, organization there are certain orders? Mm. Well, there are certain orders in there. Okay. If you are a Jesuit, you have a certain Jesuit order. People need to wake up and realize what they're dealing with. Okay. So, so, so within, within some of the church structures, they only talk in church. They only talk in Jesus Christ. Right. It's about other things. It's about controlling people's minds and controlling people's attitude. Uh, people need to examine this religion. I mean, people need to examine the Bible itself. Right. Yes? When, when, when the Bible talks about what? The church. Who is the church? Is it a building? Is it you as an individual? Is it the congregation together? Right. People need to wake up and realize what Nietzsche tells them. The sun shines 24-7. Right. We just won't see it at certain times. We well, see let, how the animals behave. Let me put. Let uh, me just let me just make one point. Go ahead. Let me just make one other point. Yeah. We need to wake up and realize that a lot of the animals should not have more sense than us. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when I was growing up, the dog went outside. It ate grass and took care of itself. Right. It did not use any other person or any chemical. So right. we need to wake up and realize reality around us. You want to ask a question? Yeah. The question that I wanted to ask is, in regards to the structure, right? We have structures in 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 every part of civil society. Uh, if you were, if you are, if you are a, a teacher or a lawyer, if you're a teacher, you belong. If you're a lawyer, you 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 belong to the bar. And there there are expectations. Like as a lawyer, you're probably not going to be you know drunk every day, right? Because it may not fit into what a person being a lawyer might be might should be doing. If you're a teacher, you probably shouldn't be in a gambling house, you know, every day because that that is not in the confinement. You know, what I mean, it goes beyond what you should be doing as as that. Now, as a priest, yes, as a father in a church that have following, do you think that anything that was said or by his action goes against that confinement, that that construct? That, 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 that was created. And if it does, and if he has difference of opinion on the religion or the structure of that organization, why didn't he just leave? Well, I, I, I agree with you that within any, any system you have structures. Right. But the church never knew, the members never knew, the public never knew what other transgressions uh, Father Paul um, 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 did uh, 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 um, what rules he transgressed within, within the Catholic Church. Right. Essentially, Father Paul is being crucified because he spoke about the, about the Gaza situation. And then now we're hearing all other red herrings. If he was such, if he was behaving in such a manner that was not in accordance with the principles of the Church, he should have been taken care of privately before. Right. And not because he spoke on the issue of Gaza. Let us be honest with ourselves. Right. You know, right. if he was going wrong all along, why didn't they take action? Why wasn't he one? Why, why wasn't members of his congregation told to talk to him? Because he's doing other things that is wrong. All these other things, in my opinion, is red herring. We, we should be educated enough now as a people. We're not living in the dark ages, in slavery. We should be educated enough to realize, look, the issue here is simple. He spoke, and somebody did not like what he said. Right. Right. But he has to get permission from the bishop to speak? Really? That's the era that we're in? Yeah. I mean, those are the words of the, the bishop himself. He didn't have my permission. Right. So he has to go to the bishop and ask him for permission to say X, Y, and Z on the altar? And we need to wake up and realize what church is about. Yeah. A lot of the churches is all about controlling our children's mind so that it could control them later on in society. Well, but it's still good, good, good to go to church. There are some good principles, whatever religion that some people choose. Right, right. You know, but we need to examine the Creator according to the Bible. He made man in his own likeness and image. So our brother next door, or our brother in Palestine, or our brother in Argentina, is all our brother. Yes. We see the Creator every day right around us, with nature and with people around us. So we need to love each other. Yes, absolutely. Have a good night. Thank you so much, Carl. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Seven one eight seven zero one five seven two zero, guys. And we cannot. I'm here. We're speaking about all these things, guys. I hope you guys are paying attention to what's happening in Haiti and the intervention 
that the church and 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 just 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 Caricom and 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 England and Canada and all of these people, the intervention that is needed in Haiti right now. Um, it, it is bad in Haiti and we need to speak up and not forget that those are our brothers and sisters over there as well. They're not doing fine, they're not doing well. Haiti is almost to becoming, or if not yet, a failed state, right? And the church, if we have to sound the alarm, if we have to speak up, if we have to let people know, we have to keep speaking about what's happening in Haiti. It is not well. It is not well with their soul over there. It's bad. It's real bad. Phone lines are open, 718 guys. We're talking about this, this washing linen in public, washing your dirty linen in public, and it's happening across the region right now. And this story has been covered around the world. we got another caller on the line. Caller, you live. Where are you calling us from? Uh, yeah, I'm calling from British, from the US Virgin Islands. USVI, how are you doing? Hey, um, yeah, I'm all right, my brother. I would like to make a comment on this. Um, I see nothing wrong in the priests uh, talking about what is going on with you in Gaza. Nothing wrong with that, because based on the Bible principles, the Bible is all talking about the good and the bad, uh, uh, and what is wrong and what is right. Right. So I ain't seen nothing wrong about that. I think the, the, the Catholic Church in itself, I mean, based on the Bible, the Catholic Church is a fraud. The Catholic Church, is, in terms of Christianity, based on what the Bible said to be, God said to be holy. He said, He, if God is holy, so He asks us to be holy. He's not supposed to be Catholic. He's not supposed to be Pentecostal. He's not supposed to be Adventist or whatever. He said to be holy. I mean, the practice of the Catholic Church is is not conducive to what the Bible is saying. Because the Catholic Church is wrong totally. I mean, in terms of the, the, they don't believe in baptism, because the Bible says, what the Catholic say for, take for baptism is not baptism. The Bible says is to, to be baptized, is to be submerged in water, to bury it in water. Right. They don't, they believe in, um, in idolatry, because they have it hanging all over in the church. <laughs> this is wrong. They believe in um, three gods, because they believe God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says one God. God says he is one. So these, I mean, and these are just a few things. They, they praise Haley Mary. They, they praise Haley Mary. And this is totally wrong. So, I mean, <laughs> I totally, I, I'm not against the, 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 well, I don't want to call him Father because God said don't call no man Father. Call no man, man Father. So I, I'm not against the priest for what he's saying. I think the bishop is wrong for, on, on that case. But, <laughs> so, um, this is not the age where you have to um, get permission to speak on, on things that is wrong. So that shows you how the the corruption that is going on in the in, in, in the Catholic Church. So I, I, I think I support the um the, the priest, but I um I think the Catholic Church needs to restructure and, and, and follow the principles of the Bible. Right. Thank you, man. Well, okay, Carla. Uh, let, let me let me say this, guys. Um we are myself, and I don't think anyone is in the position to criticize any other religion, and uh, because everyone is it's going by their interpretation. Each religion goes based on the interpretation of the Bible, all right? And you cannot say that, like people cannot say, well, you are a Seventh Day Adventist. What you're doing is wrong, because this, the folks who believe as a Seventh Day Adventist, they would tell you and push back on any criticism who they're celebrating or having mass on Saturdays, right? That's the interpretation. So we cannot, we cannot justify that because it's all uh, a matter of interpretation of the Bible. The Jews have a belief. Um, the, 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 although the, the Christianity is made up of so many denominations, their belief system, the belief is slightly different. We have who believe in Muhammad. So, it all comes down to interpretation, right? So we cannot criticize and say this religion is wrong because everyone in that religion will push back on you and say they, they feel like they believe. So we're not here to criticize the Catholic, the folks who, uh, Catholic religion, uh, the Catholic faith, I should say. Uh, this is not a criticism. This is not a, 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 a condemnation on you 
Uh, this is just to talk about this particular subject, this particular uh, matter that is being played out here in the public, all right? Everyone have the right to believe whoever they want to and however they want to believe, and we cannot criticize that, all right? Phone lines are open, 718-701-5720. Give us a call right now and let us talk, let us conversate, and let us um, get on to the crack, to the meat of this, guys, because this story is not going anywhere. Here's my concern. So this Sunday, every all I would be on River Sally because the priest, the father of that particular church, Father Gerald Paul, he has been suspended, right, from any priestly duties. He has been defrocked from any priestly duties. But he's saying he ain't going nowhere. So what's going to happen the people from River Sally and who frequent his church, if you could call me and let me know what's happening, are you going to wait or go and stand in front of the congregation and see who, which priest that comes in? Um, are you, are you, are you going, going to sit in the pew if another priest come? Or are you going to not go at all? What is the situation? What's going to go down? This Sunday is going to be very interesting. And also, guys, do you believe that uh, Father Paul went too far? And if he had his difference of opinion about the Catholic Church, should he have left sooner or should he have left before? These are some of the conversations that's happening. This is... This is what's pissing you off on a Tuesday. Phone line still open, 718-701-5720. Call us up, 718-701-5720. Yeah, he was defrock. Yeah, defrock. Have I heard that one before? <laughs> yeah, he was defrock. Yes, yeah, Sunday ride to River Sally. We're gonna find out. We're gonna we're gonna find out what's happening there, guys. Again, guys, 718-701-5720. We're following this story. And tomorrow, guys, tomorrow we're gonna make an attempt, a second attempt, uh, to get some first hand information from people who know this oh so well, who could give us um like information on what's the next step, what's gonna happen next. Back to the phone lines. Call Hello? Eli, call Eli, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Florida. Florida, go right ahead. Okay. Yeah, caller, listen to me. Listen to me on the phone line and turn your background, yes. turn, your, turn your TV down, whatever you, you're looking at. Okay. Turn that down and just listen to me on the phone line. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, caller. We're listening to you. I'm not hearing. Okay, I I think Father Paul was uh, was wrong. I am Catholic. I've been Catholic all my life. Okay. And uh, there are things the Catholic Church do that I don't necessarily agree with. But I think if you're going to be a part of an institution, you have to follow their policies. If you're not prepared to follow it, get out. If I went on on public me or social media or whatever, and speak about my workplace in such a rude manner, I wouldn't have a job. Okay? So it's, it's the same principle. And from what um, the bishop is saying, he's been spoken to many times, and he doesn't seem to care. I listened to him on the narrative, and he's calling Father, um, Cl Father Harvey Clyde. Clyde and Clyde, like, you know, you know, so rude and so so in a very derogatory way. I mean, it, that doesn't fly. As I said, if I went and speak about my office this way, I wouldn't have a job. And right. yes, I do, uh, in, where I work, I don't know about him, but where I work, I do need permission from, in, well, as a matter of fact, we're not allowed to speak to the media at all. We cannot speak to anyone about the church. Any, any um, conversation with the public have to go through certain protocols and they, in the higher levels, deal with it. We cannot. Right. But, but um, what, what, Father, what Father Harvey is saying, he's been a priest there for over 30 plus years, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, mm-hmm. Is it that is is that the first time they had a problem with what he has been saying? Is it a prolonged um, dissatisfaction with what he's been it saying? It looks like. Mm-hmm. It seems to me like this, what the, the rant he made about Gaza is a straw that broke the camel's back. That's how I see it. He's been warned, it looks like, many times, and he doesn't seem to care. The bishop said it. He doesn't seem to care, and he doesn't correct his behavior. Now, he, in my opinion, my personal opinion, he needs to tone it down if he wants to be a priest. When I, it, when, you know, when, I'm when, not when, into when, this. When, when, you, when you say tone it down, do you mean not tell the full truth? If I mean what, sorry? If you mean not tell, not tell the full truth. Because, kiss on point, let me put this to you. When he was on my program uh-huh. last, right? When he was on my program last, he said that the Catholic Church have a role to play in slavery. And they benefited from right. slavery. He said that, right? Okay, right. Should he have said that or should he have toned that down? He needs to tone that down because but, but if you're true? part like, of the institution it, and you're that true? critical, is it true? if you're that critical, get out. But, no, but if you're that critical, if you're okay, let, let me just tell you something. Right. Where I work, I see a lot of things that eh, I may do differently or I don't like, but you think I'll go there and speak publicly about it? No, that's where I work. I may have a, a conversation with a manager or somebody and say, you know what, I don't like this or I don't like how they do this. Or some of them are co-workers and I would get together and we say, we don't like how they do this or we don't like how they do that. But that's where it ends. I'm not going to go on public media and social media and, and to the pu- public and tell them that. If I feel very, very, very strongly about the things they do, I will leave. So, I will not be a part of that um, organization if I feel that strongly about things they do. He needs to tone it down. Okay, we know about the, 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 the part they the played in slavery and whatever, but you don't have to be, be out there broadcasting it. Let it be. <laughs> okay. Let it be. He needs to tone it down. The airing thing and the jab jab thing, tone it down, man. Okay. I mean, I don't know the man. I've never met him. I've met Father Harvey many times. Um, you know, well, where he does mass, I've, I've been to mass where he's been and that type of thing. I've never met Tom um, Father Paul, but he needs to tone it down. Okay. And he needs to be respectful. I found him very disrespectful the way he was on the narrative calling um, Father Clyde, Clyde and Clyde. Like, you know, they're, that's his superior. You've got to have some respect. I see. I see. So it's about... It's yeah, about you have to have some respect. If you, it's about respect and not and not washing yes. the dirty linens out in public. So, so, so you're, you're... Well, yeah, because, I mean, as I said, there are things that, that they do that I don't like, but when I look around, because there are times I thought of leaving the Catholic Church, but when I look around, they all have dirty laundry. Father, how so much women in the church, he's sleeping with everybody, he have children with everybody in the church. So when I think, I said, what am I trading? One bad place for another? No, I'd rather stay there. Right. And I, w- the day I could give um, um what do you call it um tithes or whatever in the Catholic Church, no issue. The day I can't give, no issue. In the other churches, if you can't give, it's a problem. You're whispered about. You're, you're talked about. You're, you're a cheap or whatever. Right. Okay. You know, so they, they all have things um that is not so kosher. There, there are times when I get frustrated with them too. Right. But right. when I look around, I don't see, and I've, to be honest with you, I've been to a number of churches to test them out to see what they're all about, and I've seen things in there that I don't like. I see the priest blinking at, blinking at certain women in the church. Um, you have to put a collection right up in front of him so you see how much you dropped in the plate, or you have to put your name on the envelope, put your, your, your money inside of it. You know, and, you know, lots of little things that doesn't strike me as, as nice, so... What I did, I said, you know what? I better stay with the devil I know. So I have been a Catholic all my life, and that's where I plan to end. Mm, interesting. Interesting. And then they're not perfect. I would agree with you 100%. They're not perfect. But if you're going to air everything outside like that, then get out. That's simple. All right. Thank you, Carla. I appreciate you so much. And then, yeah. Stay with the devil you know. Uh-huh. All right. Let's jump back to the phone. I call her alive. Where are you calling us from? Toronto. Toronto, go right ahead. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in total disagreement with this this young lady who has just spoken. Because 
You cannot take your job and compare to a religion. As a priest, he is speaking on things as a principle of the, the church and all denominations who has a role to play in certain injustices, discriminations, and, and all of these sort of things. So that's where, I don't like to call no man father either, but let's say Paul is speaking from. The church should take a stand with what's going on. That's what he is saying. Right. And if the church fails to speak, they're not doing their godly duties. As a matter of fact, as he clearly said earlier on, it was like all religion, whether it is Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventist, order, because sometimes religions are afraid to speak on things that are a bit politically wrong. So he is saying stand up. Yeah. So I agree with him with, with that. I think the, the bishop was looking for something to finally put in the hammer to the nail right. with Father Paul. Because right. everybody knows he's a, he's a sort of radical priest. He has his ears wearing earring. We know that the bishop and they don't like it. He played jab jab. They don't like it. He stood up in a church with people cell phone on and he's he said, turn off the damn cell phone. That wasn't the right thing to do in the church. But the fact about it, he speaks from his heart as an individual, as, as a man, because he realized, you know it is wrong. Why are you having on? Right. So that's how he, 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 he came out. So speaking about the Gaza and all these different things, somebody has to stand up because, as he's saying, everybody look at Israel and everybody look at it, and everybody seem not to want to support the Gaza Strip, and as a, even though he's a priest, he's also a man with a heart, uh, you know, so he speaks as a human and a man of the cloth. Right. So if you look at the bishop, I've, I've looked at the bishop many, many times, he's in funerals, and sometimes when he speaks, there is a sort of kind of sanctimonious tone that comes from him. I've said it all the time because I look at him all the time. And 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 and, and so I don't want to say a narcissist, but it, you know, he speaks in a way that because I'm the bishop, I I am I could do this. To say he's thinking about he has not reached the stage of defrocking him yet, but to suspend him for speaking from his heart, with his passion for what is going on in and in a nation, I cannot stand by and support what the bishop is doing. The, the, Father Paul speak and he spoke his mind. Some would like it, some would not, and they should just let it let it go because this thing should not reach all there to put it to put it that way. Because his parishioners seem to love him a lot because they, they're crying, so that says something. His tone, his attitude, his honesty may not be loved by everyone, but he shows who he is. And he didn't he mentioned all other religions should stand up. He mentioned that too. So I don't see what's the big clout and for this woman taking her job and putting comparison, which your job, it's your job. They may say don't say such and such and such. But as a church, as a church. You need to call a wrong doing. So right. it shows that you stand for biblical principles or what God expects of you. With your job, they don't care about no God and no <laughs> righteousness. They say, if you go and tell our secret here, you're fired. Right. And, 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 and that's different. So I don't think what she's saying there has any clout to, uh, to it at all. So... Okay. I'm giving Father Paul my support. I'm not Catholic, but I'm giving Father Paul my support on that. Because if it happened in my religion, I would say the same thing that he. And I would actually agree with him, looking at my religion, which I would mention, and say, you know, they should be doing something like what he is saying. Right. And stand up to show that there is support for wrongdoing. Right. And that's what I have to say to you. Thank you so much, Goodbye. God. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Seven one eight seven zero one five seven two zero guys. We got a little more time on this here. We're speaking about 
um, this story and it's pissing off a lot of people and it is especially a lot of people in the Catholic faith. They are, um, I just got a text from, from a friend and they're not happy that this whole thing has been played out on social media. Uh, they're not happy that we're here talking about this, even escalating the conversation about what has transpired or what is transpiring. Um, but we didn't, we didn't start the story, right? We didn't break the story. This story was basically created for on social media. Um, the bishop went into the River Sally Church and he said what he said, right? He basically suspended the priests. And there were, of course, the priests came back and he counteracted what was said. He was on the narrative with, with Calistra Faria. Uh, and the, 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 the bishop came back and made a video. And it's also in public. So we didn't start the story, guys. We didn't break the story. Uh, we're just basically reporting on the story because this is out there, right? Um, I guess I guess tomorrow, what we're going to touch on, because tomorrow is, um, I want to take a different angle, a different look at this particular story. Tomorrow, we're going to look at it from the perspective of what's next, right? To ensure that something like that don't happen again. Let's go back to the phone lines. Call Eli, where are you calling us from? Hi, Jenny. I'm calling from Brooklyn. Hi, Brooklyn. Go right ahead. Yes. Um, my first input, um, I'm going back to the lady that called earlier and um, said that the priests need to tone it down. Now, she's like actually making a point as to tone down the truth or tone down what you believe in or tone down what you deem as being right. You're saying that you're in a job place, and even if you know something is wrong, you don't talk about it. I was taught to do the right thing, even when nobody's watching. Okay? And then um, the other point that I want to make is, um, Christ himself asked us to be like Christ. Right. And that is the only way we would know who Christ is. Right? Christ knew Judas was going to be trained from eternity. He knew that. And not one time did he tell Judas, depart from me. Never did. He kept him. How are you going to win souls to Christ if whatever your belief is um, as to somebody you think whatever they're doing is wrong, and the best thing for you to do is to try to, like, Thailand the person or try to get rid of them or brush them on their rug or do something. That is not how you win souls to Christ. And I would say this, Junior, I grew up a Catholic, okay? It took me going into secondary school, and I went to a Catholic secondary school, and it took me going into a Catholic secondary school. And I remember that first time when they said to me, oh, you have to go confess your sins to the priest. And I sat down, I was like, okay, but I remember reading in the Bible with my aunt. The Bible says, confess your sins to no man. And it pushed me at the age of 11 to start studying the Bible on my own. And it was something that I rejected because I was open in school. I got in trouble for it. Um, they even threatened me not to graduate, but... Um, Nevertheless, I stood up for what I believed in because I started studying myself to make myself accountable to God because there are certain things. Religion, for number one, Junior, religion is man-made. It was made up by man to the fact where religion has come and they become their own gods and they have people serving them. They forgot the purpose of serving God himself. So they're serving the man in the church. They're serving the man that preaches in their religion. And that's what it is. The Bible spoke about that, how God feels about religion. And yet still, we're still there. You cannot win somebody to God by getting rid of them. The matter could have been handled differently. Um, none of us were perfect, and Christ knows that very well. We're not perfect beings. That is why he died for us. So 
I'm going to love you just the way that Christ himself loved me. That don't mean to say I'm going to get up tomorrow and because you're wrong me, I choose not to love you anymore. That is not Christ-like. I'm going to love you regardless, but I'm going to let you know where you're wrong and I'm going to do it in a godly manner. Thank you very much, Junior. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carla. Appreciate you. Guys, we, we're going we're gonna to end this segment right here because tomorrow I am really going to push hard to try to have... Um, Father Gerard Paul on the program. I'm going to push really hard because we did, in fact, spoke to him two days ago, yesterday, in fact, and um, we are in contact, but we just couldn't coordinate a conversation today. So I'm going to push hard to see if we could get that done. Let's hear from him one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully. I ain't promising, guys. Hopefully, we could get that done tomorrow, all right? Guys, let me say before I go, before I wrap up this segment right here, Ride Along Live is brought to you by The Ride. The Ride. Ride e-bike excursions and tours. Yeah, man, listen. Ride e-bike excursions and tours. If you're in Grenada and you want to get a ride, you want to you wanna get through the traffic on e-bike, this is the best way to beat the traffic. Or if you want to go out on one of these excursions, you've been seeing it all over. I mean, everywhere you're going, Grenada, you're seeing those bikes, right? It's Ride, e-bike, excursions, and tours. You can check us out right now inside the Esplanade Mall, kiosk number three. Check us out and get your e-bike. Very low rates. And while you're in the Esplanade Mall, guys, and you are getting ready or your young one is getting ready for their, uh, their, their last final assembly, we are now doing printing inside of the Esplanade Mall at the kiosk, at the ride kiosk. So we're partnering with Instaprint Grenada. And Instaprint Grenada is saying that you could print your t-shirt or your sock or even, even your mug and plates and cups, any kind of printing guys, in about, 30, in, in about 24 hours or less. So they're offering printing for final assembly t-shirt. For those of you, those form fives, yeah, man, you can get your design, any design. Just pick your design and you can get your design printed. If you want more information on how you can get your final assembly t-shirt, inbox right along and I'm gonna give you the information, who to call, how to call them, and also give you a little promo code. So inbox us at Ride Along Live and we'll tell you how you can get your, 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 your young ones a promotional code to get a t-shirt printed at inside of the mall. Very, very great price, great rates, and of course, I got um, a coupon code for you. Call us right now. We'll be right back. Don't move. You initially said that you thought the Supreme Court would have a difficult time. Your quote yeah, that yeah. I looked up today was, avoiding the consequence of the plain language of the 14th Amendment. It was obviously a 9-0 call today. So I wonder, you know, what you made of this ruling and if all you right, feel right. differently but, now. But I'm, I'm certainly not here to talk about the 14th Amendment the U.S. Constitution, the Supreme Court, Donald Trump, nothing like that. In fact, I'm more interested in finding out what's happening in the Caribbean. I'm, I'm more interested in telling you what's happening in the Caribbean. I, I, in fact, I want to invite you to Grenada. And when you get there, you have to be a part of the Riders e-bike excursions and tours. Now, every Sunday, we take you out on a trail inside of Grenada. Best opportunity to see the interior of the island. But if you don't want to get that adventurous and you want to go on your own thing, you could walk into the Esplanade Mall, nice mall, as soon as you get off the cruise ship in St. George and rent an e-bike. And you could ride around the tongue of St. George for the entire day. Low price, great price, excellent fare. Now this is more important than any 14 amendment, guys. I'm telling you. When you come to Grenada, you check out Riders E-Bike Excursions and Tours. Yeah, Riders E-Bike Excursions and Tours. Even if you stayed in the hotel, yeah, we'll get you your e-bike. So you can go to the beach uh, or night out, whatever it is. Check us out inside the Esplanade Mall. You could even call us at 473-422-1011. That's 473-422-1011. Riders E-Bike Excursions and Tours. Get with the program. 14 Amendment, Donald Trump. I, I, I just don't I, I just don't want to talk about that. Everybody got the gloves? All right. All right. All right.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys, also don't forget if you want to advertise, if you have a business and you want to advertise on Ride Along Live, this is where you do it. This is where you do it. Inbox us or call us for more information on your rates for advertising on Ride Along Live. The number that you call for more information on advertising your business is 4, uh, 718-701-5720. It pays to advertise on Ride Along Live with us and reach millions daily weekly monthly yeah over 10 million per month it pays to advertise with us reach more and let us send your business viral advertise with us and reach more savings with Cathwell stationary services unbeatable Easter flash sale Imagine slashing your office costs without compromising on quality. Yes, you heard it right. For a limited time only, dive into exclusive deals like copy paper at just $18 per ream and up to 18% off on essential office and school supplies. From sleek laptops and tablets to vibrant markers and highlighters, from sturdy office furniture to the latest office machines. Cathwills has it all. Don't wait. Call us now at 442-5848 or 435-2277 or drop us an email at cathwillsoffice at gmail.com. Hurry, the Easter flash sale is for a limited time only. Cathwill Stationery Services, where savings, selection, and service come together for you. The privilege of sampling the Golden Jubilee edition of the limited edition spice rum from the Grenada Distillers, and I must say it's something that you should try. Um, it is authentically Grenadian, but from the flavors to the aromas to the overall taste, the blend is great. It's light, it's golden like the Golden Jubilee, and I think you can make any collector's shells anywhere in the world. That's off to the Grenadier Distillers. Ride Along Live is also brought to you with the kind compliments of JetBlue if you're flying to Grenada, guys. Get on the JetBlue, get on the next JetBlue, guys. Book your ticket early for Spice Mass coming up. But listen, JetBlue fly two flights a day to Grenada. JFK, straight on to Grenada. Go to JetBlue.com and book right now. Big up to the GTA, Grenada Tourism Authority, for enabling all these great fares. JetBlue, JFK to Grenada. Also, guys, if you're in um, Boston, Saturday is your day. Fly direct from Boston to Morris Bishop International Airport on JetBlue. JetBlue! I want you folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily big three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture. Nation building and our future. So go out and play, folks. Make it a must. You will see what the National Lottery is doing for us. When you play big three cash flow and play with. The NLA will support you all the way. Start on September 30th, Monday to Friday. These three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation-building. Sunday money Hey guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our program today. We appreciate you so much. On behalf of all of our production team here at Ride Along Live, up, 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 up. Thank you so much. Our senior executive producer, Lois JJ. Kibbs, Gail, how are you doing? Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being a part of our program. Tomorrow, guys, we have another interesting program for you lined up. And we want to, um, going to post, I'll, I'll put the um, poster up early so you guys will know what, what we have up for tomorrow. All right. Also, guys, Ride Along Live is where everyone have a story to tell. So if you have a story to tell, give us a story to share, want to hear it, give us a call. 718-701-5720 or inbox us. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget, guys, we have some special rates on the T-shirt printing for final assembly. Inbox Ride Along right now, guys. I will give you the, the hookup. We'll give you the hookup. It's Instaprint Grenada. If you're in Grenada and you want to get your customized design, your customized design, class of 2024. Highly graphical customized design. You're gonna be the envy of everybody.
give us a call right now and get your t-shirt printed. Or if you have your own design, you have your t-shirt, whatever, whatever you have, whatever you want. Let me show you a cool shirt that somebody printed um, today. I had them take a picture and send it for me. This one was done at, um, this one was done at, at the ride kiosk today. I love it, I love it. I have to get one of these. It says, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Yeah, isn't that a wicked shirt? Isn't that a nice shirt? Yeah, I want one of that. I want one of that. They're going to the kiosk. Uh, while you're getting your bikes, your e-bikes, or, or any uh, of the merch that we have there, you could also get your t-shirt printed in 24 hours or less. Check them out inside of the Esplanade Mall. Ride and Insta print inside the Esplanade Mall. Thanks for watching, guys. We love you. See you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Good night.